Okay, in the last video, we created this text container and our text and some functionality so that when we hover over the color picker, we change the color of the text. Okay, so this is the original project. Our project is going to actually be a little different in appearance. This is because as I am screencasting this, I am creating it all over and I am changing the CSS a little. So I think it will look better. But it will function just the same. So in this video, we're going to create these buttons that will toggle open these forms that we are have our form elements in. So let's go to the code and create a div with an ID of button set. This is where we're going to put our buttons. So we want to create four buttons. We can add more later. So we need a button with an ID of font underscore BT. Then we copy it and change it to text shadow BT, border BT, and box shadow BT. Now let's change the text to text shadow, border, and box shadow. Okay. Now let's go to the CSS and give our div with an ID of button set a position of absolute top zero right zero with 100% and a height of 5%. Now let's give it a border so we can see what we're doing. And I want to take this red border off our text container because we don't need it anymore. So let's save it and look at it in the browser. Now that we have our buttons, let's move them to the right side. So back to the code, we select the buttons within the button set. and then float to the right with a margin 10 pixels, 10 pixels, zero and zero. Also, let's give it a background of black and a color, how about orange? Save it, go back to the browser and refresh. Now we have our buttons where we want them. Now let's go back to the code and in the HTML, Let's create a form element. Now let's go back to the CSS and give that form a style. A position of absolute top 5%. We want the form to be right under the button set, which has a position of zero and a height of 5%. A right of 0% with 20%, height 80%. And let's give it a border so we can see what it where it is. Refresh. And I don't see anything, so something must be wrong. Let's figure it out. And I forgot to save the HTML. So let's try this again and refresh. And now we have our form. So now let's add some field sets to our form. So back to the HTML, we create four field sets. And then let's give each one of them a unique ID. We want their IDs to correspond to the elements we are going to put in them. So, for example, we want a font set, a text shadow set, a border set, and a box shadow set. Now let's put a header in each one of our field sets to indicate what goes in that field set. Okay, so we need a text shadow. Uh, we already have the font, but we need a border and then a box shadow. So let's save it and go to the browser and refresh. Now we have our field sets, but we can't see the headers. So let's give them some styles. In the CSS, let's give our H2 tags some color. For now, let's give it white. Let's save it and refresh. Okay, but what we really want to do is hide these field sets except for one at a time. And then, like in the completed project, we will toggle these field sets by clicking the corresponding button. So back to the code, 
and we'll make a field set. We'll set the field set to display none, but we're going to set the field set with an active class to display block. That's going to be our first one. So let's set the font set, give that a class of active. Okay, save it. Okay, so now we need to create some functionality so that when we click a button, that field set will open. I see I got these buttons backwards. I need to rearrange them. So in the HTML, I'm going to reposition the buttons by taking the font button, putting that on the bottom. Since these buttons are floated to the right, I have to rearrange them so that my font button is at the left and so on. Okay, so let's save it and look at it in the browser. Refresh, and we have our font, text shadow, border, box shadow. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is I want to get rid of these red borders. I just put those on there so I can, like, get an idea of where my stuff is sitting. Sometimes I use borders, sometimes I don't, but I don't want these here. So I'm going to take them out and I save it. Okay, well, it's looking a little bit better. So now we got to create some functionality so that these buttons, we can click on these buttons and they open the other field sets. So let's go to the HTML and look at the HTML really closely. We marked it up so that we have all these buttons with an underscore of BT, but our field sets have an underscore of set and they all correspond. We have a font underscore BT and then a font underscore set. So when we click the font button, we want to open up the font set, but we want to make sure that all the other field sets are closed. And when we click the text shadow button, we just want to open up the text shadow field set, but make sure that all the others are closed. So we have four buttons to do the same thing. The only difference is that we need to open up the, the field set of the corresponding button. So let's go to the JavaScript and in the doc ready function right down at the end, let's create a click event for a button. For whatever button, we're going to declare a variable, call it button. We're going to get the ID of the button that we're going to click. So we get its attribute, ID attribute, and set it into a variable. Okay. So when I click on a button, whichever button I click on, that's what the this keyword means. So for example, if I click on the font button, then my variable button will equal font underscore BT. But I want to open up the font underscore set. So what we need to do is apply the substring to our button and then strip the underscore BT off and then add underscore set because whenever we click a button, it will open up that set, that field set. So remember that this keyword in this function points to the button that we're clicking on. So let's redeclare our button variable and set it equal to the substring of our previous button variable from the first letter of the string, which is zero, all the way to the length of the string minus three. So now let's console.log button. Okay, save it. Refresh. Click the text shadow button and the font button. Check it out. We got text shadow and font without the underscore. So now let's get rid of that console.log and instead let's get the hashtag, the pound sign. We're going to get the ID of, we're going to concatenate our, our new, our variable button and then we're going to concatenate or add to that a underscore set. Okay, and then we're going to slide down. This is the transition or whatever. You can fade it, whatever you want. Let's check it out. Let's see if this works. There's text shadow, border, box shadow, 
And that's working pretty good, except for we need to hide the ones that we don't want to see. So when we click the button, we want to get all the field sets. We want to slide them up. If they're already slid up, then they already there stay that way. So let's check that out again. Save it. Refresh. So click the text shadow, text shadow goes up, border, box shadow. So what would happen if we added another button and another field set, which is what we plan on doing later. So let's go ahead and add a background button and then a background field set. So in the code, and we need to put this new button at the top because we're floating right. We want to have this all the way to the right. Let's call this button. We'll give it an ID of background underscore button. So now let's create the field set for the background. Let's copy this. Go ahead and paste it below. And then change that to background underscore set. And then change the heading. So let's save it, refresh, and now we have a new background button. When you click it, the background field set shows up, but the others are all get hidden. So everything's working good. We can continue to add buttons as we need to. As long as we add a field set, we don't need to add anything more to our function. Okay, so I'm going to add to the selector a button set and the greater than sign so that only the children see remember the button set is the container and the children of this container are our buttons so this function is only going to run when we click on one of these buttons okay in the next video we will start creating the functionality that will allow us to change the style of this text what we're going to do is create some form elements within our field sets and then use jQuery to get the values of those field sets and then put them into our another jQuery method called the .css method. So anyway, thanks for watching and I hope you are having fun and I hope that you are learning something.